Today I want to discuss and show you how to tram the head on a Bridgeport mill. This will work for a Bridgeport or any of the imports or clones. As long as you have a head that can tilt left to right and up and down, this procedure will work for you. Now on the Bridgeport, there are four bolts that hold the head to the ram and allow the head to tilt right and left. We're going to loosen them up and over here on the back there's an adjustment bolt that will allow you to turn that head and get it into alignment square with the table. There's also a setting that allows the head to tilt down and up. A lot of people refer to that as nod. That's affixed by these three bolts here on the ram and there's an adjustment bolt up on top which is used to bring the head into alignment in that orientation. Now the first thing you want to do is uh, loosen the bolts all four bolts but you don't loosen them falling out loose just loosen them a half a turn just so that they're they can be put in finger tight this will keep the head from flopping around and it'll be much more accurate when you're doing your procedure the second thing you want to do is you want to set an indicator into the spindle I'm using a drill chuck which is fine you can use a collet holder or an indicol uh, whatever is suitable for you and whatever you have around I'm using a Starrett 196 indicator. It's a back plunger indicator which allows us to uh, work the table in order to get the reading that we want. A lot of people indicate off the table itself. I prefer to indicate off a known flat surface. In this case I'm using one, two, three blocks. They're an inch thick, two inches wide, three inches deep, hence the name one, two, three. They're perfectly flat, they're precise and parallel ground, and it's a great reference surface. When you put them on your table, make sure there are no nicks or burrs on the table that could possibly change your reading. You'll notice there are a lot of holes in the one, two, three blocks. Now, obviously, we're not going to indicate on a hole. We will indicate on one of the spaces between the holes, which is our flat ground surface. You'll see that the blocks are staggered and that's because when I get my reading I want it to be 90 degrees, I want it to be parallel with the table 90 degrees to the left and 90 degrees to the right as my indicator is offset I have to offset my blocks to compensate so we're going to set our block where it's on a flat surface and then come 180 degrees and make sure it's on a flat surface there that will ensure that we're getting the proper readings and we can proceed to get the head squared up to the table. Now what we want to do is we want to take the table and raise it up against the indicator till we get to zero. I like to work left to right. You can work right to left. It doesn't really matter but this is my preferred method of doing it. Now that we've zeroed our indicator to the left side we're going to rotate it around to the right side and check what our reading is. We can see here that we've got about 21 thousandths. So we're 21 thousandths out. We're going to split the difference. We're going to take 10 and a half thousandths out of this side and we'll do that with the adjustment bolt up on the head itself. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this adjustment bolt here. It's a three quarter inch all the bolts here that we're going to be working with are three quarters of an inch. I'm going to turn that so that I can adjust half of that difference out of this side of the mill head. Now we'll rotate our indicator over to the right side and see where we are. And we're going to re-zero. So as you can see our indicator is at zero and now I'm just going to rotate it around 180 degrees and again we're at zero here. So yeah, let me just put that 180 degrees. So now we know that our head is in tram on the uh, tilt left and right. The next thing we're going to tackle now will be the nod, to tram the head in with the nod. And again, we said that's 
this piece here which allows the entire head assembly to tilt towards the body of the machine or away from the body of the machine. That's controlled by these three bolts and the adjustment bolt up on top. For this procedure we'll move our precision blocks to 12 and 6 and we'll set them up similar to the way we did for the tilt right and left. Now to trim the knot in we're going to use our precision ground blocks. We're going to set them at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and make sure that we're on a surface, a nice ground surface. And we come 180 degrees out that way and we should be good. Now at the moment this head, the nod is in tram so we're zero zero here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of tram and show you how to adjust that. With our indicator at the 12 o'clock position we're going to bring the table up in order to zero the indicator. So you can see there our indicator is at zero. Now we're going to rotate it to the six o'clock position and see what our reading is. And it appears that we have about sixteen thousandths. Now what we're going to do, rather than split the difference, we're going to take that right to zero by using the adjustment bolt on the ramp. Okay. So we'll just very gently bring that right to zero. Now at this point we'll go back and measure at the 12 o'clock position. And I'm just going to hold this like this and bring this over. And we can see that we're about 10,000th out. Now we're not going to do anything with the adjustment. What we're going to do is we're going to raise the table till we bring this to zero. Now that's a little bit different from the way we did it before. And come back to six o'clock. This is one of those procedures that we're going to repeat several times. Now you can see we're a little less than ten thousandths. Again now we're going to use the adjustment and bring it all the way to zero again and repeat. So we go here to 12 o'clock, we see what our number is, we'll raise the table to bring ourselves to zero, we'll come around 180 degrees back to the six o'clock, I'm reading five thousandths out, I'm going to take that out with the adjustment knob up on top, rotate back, see where I am. Right now I'm reading three thousandths. Bring that out with the table. So you're not splitting the difference here. This is a little bit different because the point of rotation is offset. So now I'm about two thousandths out. And take a little bit of that out. There you go, right to zero. Come back. This is just a question of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get the run out that you're looking for. In our case we want it to be under a thousandth. Now I'm at a thousandth right there. Just going to take that ever so slightly out. And I'm at about a half a thousandth. I really want to get this nice right on the money. I got a thousandth. I'm sorry, I got zero and I've got zero. Just so you can see, now there is a little parallax there, but it is on zero. So there it is at the 12 o'clock position. And here we are moving to the 6 o'clock position. And I believe you can see that that's zero as well. So it really, it didn't take, it took longer to describe it than it actually does to do it. So at this point you'll tighten these three bolts up and again keeping an eye on your indicator if you see any movement stop and uh, just go to the next bolt. You may have to readjust. That's only if you've really loosened these bolts quite a lot. Again as I said just remember to just only loosen these bolts slightly less than finger tight or more than finger tight. Um, 
in other words, you want the bolts to be finger tight so that you can actually move the head, but it's not going to flip and flop. So at this point, the mill head is completely in tram, both with tilt and nod, and we would just tighten up these three bolts. All right, so a quick recap of tramming in the nod. We'll put our precision blocks at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. We will set our indicator at the 12 o'clock position and zero it. We'll raise the table up till we can zero it. Try not to get more than 15 or 20 thousandths. This way the indicator can slide up without banging into the block. That's kind of an important thing. Once we have our indicator zeroed at 12 o'clock, we're going to bring it to the 6 o'clock position and read the difference. If, for example, we have 10 thousandths difference, we will take the 10 thousandths completely out. In other words, we will go right back to zero. We will not split the difference. And we will do that using the adjustment knob on the top of the RAM. At that point, when we have the zero, the indicator zeroed, we'll bring it back to the 12 o'clock position and read what our reading is. Now this will probably be a few thousandths less. We will take that and bring the indicator to zero by using the knee. We'll bring the knee up until the indicator reads zero again and then simply repeat the process. At the front, we will take out any discrepancies all the way to zero using the adjustment knob and at the rear or 12 o'clock position we will zero the indicator by using the knee. We'll repeat this as many times as necessary to get both indicator readings to be less than 1,000th TIR which is fancy machinist talk for total indicator run out or total indicator reading depending on what part of the country you live. Once we've done that we can lock everything down again using the three bolts and our machine will be in tram. Thanks a lot.